Today's podcast is brought to you by T-Mobile. Join the thousands tweeting and posting their appreciation for our military and veterans by using hashtag hats off for heroes. When you share your photo or video, T-Mobile will donate $1 to support vets with Team Rubicon. This is the best of the Dan Lebator show with the Stugatz podcast. There are weird things happening around here in Miami, around our show. Uh, I'm not even talking about the feud with the Baldwin brothers, America's first royal family of arrogance. The Baldwin brothers, uh, we, we've escalated the feud with them. We'll get to that in a second. But Allison just came through here, Mike, and this is actually where we've arrived in the sports universe. Allison, who basically keeps us all from falling into the ocean, comes through and says the following sentence. Are you tired of Ice Cube? And I'm like, what do you mean are you tired of Ice Cube? And she's like, well, would you want him to come through the studio next week uh, as part of what they're doing, what the Big Three League is doing here in Miami? And, Mina, what are you doing? It's very distracting, and you can hear it over the air. <laughs> I'm getting set up. You started already? Well, you're not going to have to be able to get set up because we got to send you away for two minutes. Already? Go ahead. Penalty box I, I, already. Penalty box. I haven't box. even spoken. I'm sorry. I know, but you were just making noises before speaking. You were making noises before speaking trying to fix this. Can we get her set up while she's in the penalty box? Can we take the two minutes to take her out of the show? That's wow. two minutes in the box. I object to this. I mean, what does that mean? You don't object to penalty box minutes. Too late. I already did. <laughs> you just go to the penalty box. You get two minutes, you get two minutes. Ice Cube, Mike. The idea that our show would be in a place where, hey, do you want Ice Cube to come in studio? My response was obviously yes. Anytime Ice Cube wants to be anywhere around anything we're doing, my answer is yes. In studio, yeah. Yeah, we've probably done enough phoners. <laughs> yeah, just keeping it real. I mean, we've had him, what, six times in the last, you know, eight months? All right, so wait a minute. You guys think we should escalate our self-importance to a Baldwinian level and say to ourselves, look, Ice Cube, if you want to call in and just call in, no thanks. But if you want to come by, if you want to come by and help us with our content, you got to come by. Yeah, for sure. You can you can stop by. That'd be a good day. Yeah. Are you not a little alarmed by the fact that? That we would be doing that. That seems like disrespectful. And disrespect, as you know, probably doesn't go very far with NWA. Look, we're a long way away from that. This is the big three league. I've heard about it ad nauseum. I don't like it. It's three guys on a court. I don't like the gimmicky spot from the floor. I don't like the old basketball players that are usually enforcers out there. It's not for me. Okay? I get you want to promote it. I get you want to promote it often. Just if you want to promote it on this show again in studio, please. Have you guys watched it? It's actually kind of fun to watch. I watched. Oh, it's great games. fun! Like Nate Robinson, what Nate Robinson did to McCants the other day. Do you guys all see this? And it, 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 this happened recently. McCants comes out in a Joker mask. He's wearing a Joker, and he looks like the fattest Heath Ledger you've ever seen. Also, a darker night. What happened? What's she doing out there? I, uh, I, I had her mic'd up the whole time. Oh, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes. 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 Do I have sound? Yes. Yeah. What do you? I, I, I fly all the way to Miami, and within three, not even two minutes of sitting down, you send me to the box. It's pretty rude. <laughs> well, Mike, we sent her to the box because let's explain. Can she hear me? Can she hear yes, me? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, we sent you to the box. Because you came in here and we were trying to do a show and all I saw was your arms trying to untangle about 17 wires while me and Mike were trying to do a show. We were doing a thing and all you were concerned about is your wire. Yeah. I got to get my wires untangled. I don't see what's wrong about that. Also, the reason I had to is because I was doing a quick change because the Chris Cody show was going on when I walked in. How did you feel about the Chris Cody show? You were a you sat right in the middle of the Chris Cody show. It was one minute the one minute maiden yeah. voyage of ESPN Television's ESPN Ooze Chris Cody show. How did it go? Uh, it was certainly a lot more informative than your show. I learned what time it was in at least five different places. <laughs> he gave me the exact temperature in maybe six different cities. So. I would give it a A, A plus. Mike, how do you feel about that character? How do you feel about the character of uh, Chris Cody, the Chris Cody show? I didn't know he was doing a character. 
All right, two minutes is up, Mina. You can All right, come Mina, back. you can come back in. That league, though, so you got the fat McCants running around out there, and he's in a Joker mask. I think, you know what? You said it's great fun, and I'm pretty yeah. sure all you know about this league is what they showed you for 15 seconds on Highly Questionable. Okay, but listen, you, well, yes, that, well, and and the seven times we've talked to Ice Cube in the last eight months on Highly Questionable. Oh, yeah. But Nate Robinson makes the shot that wins the game, runs over to the other bench, and steals Fat McCants' Joker mask. Steals it. And then gives the post game interview in which he's talking about, you can't do this. You can't do that. You can't come in here with a Joker mask. We buried you. It looked like great fun. It looked like a little bit like professional wrestling. It looks like probably what the XFL is going to try to do. Look, man, I saw Reggie Evans play for long enough. I don't want to rehash that experience. <laughs> it's just not for me. I, I, a lot of people watch it and tell me it's great fun. And to be fair to the big three league, no matter how many times Ice Cube's come on this show to promote it, I haven't given it a second of my time because it's just not something that appeals to me. Wait, wait a minute. There's a team that's co-captained by Steven Jackson yep. and Meta World Peace. Yep. The- the captain is Chauncey, and Ryan Hollins is on that yeah. team. Do you know Ryan Hollins was in the Big Three? I did not know Ryan Hollins was the, is in, was in the Big Charles Three. Charles Oakley is the coach. This is the greatest team ever, the Killer Threes. <laughs> well, Charles Oakley's not going to make it. How does Ryan Hollins have time? He's on literally well, every ESPN. Every time I turn on ESPN2, ESPN News, Ryan Hollins is looking right back at me. How does he have time? <laughs> well, here's the deal with the Big Three. I don't watch, but here's what I know about it. You tune in to watch a player, thinking that you'd watch it. Hell, there are only three spots, and they're almost never there. Chauncey plays whenever the hell he wants. Steven Jackson does the jump. He does all sorts. Steven Jackson's got so much ambiguity surrounding his television contract, by the way. I'm he's, on, he's, on he's on multiple, on he's on multiple networks. It's, it, like, how is he able to roam the earth being Steven Jackson through every media empire? It's amazing. And Ryan Hollins, how is Ryan Hollins on this team? Because he's on this team maybe two games a season. Allen Iverson was supposed to be the face of this league. How many minutes did he play? Five total? They suspended him. I Actually, one of the reasons I like talking to Ice Cube, because I'm like, uh, gosh, I don't remember the quote, but he got into business with some businessmen that robbed him. And so I just asked him, hey, do you have any regrets of like about the Iverson experience? You got to suspend people. He's like, no, my only regret, investors, dealing with foreign <laughs> investors. And evidently there's been some sort of mess there. That's where we are with Ice Cube. Yeah, there's geopolitical fallout because of the big three's existence. <laughs> <laughs> I think there are too many sports. That's my take. There are two, your take when the uh, AAF, the other football league, the spring league, there's the X. FL, right, right. So your take when that was announced was that it was for betters primarily, or that it maybe that was the business angle that they'd be catering to the bet. I, I guess, but who has time to watch all of these leagues? Like, I don't think the market can bear the creation of even low cost, low overhead leagues at this point. Also, let me give a news flash to all these new sports leagues that are popping mm. up. You're not creating a new sport if you're taking an existing sport and reducing the players on the court by two on each team. (laughs) That's not a new sport. It's not a revolutionary idea. My friends and I in school did it when we couldn't only play half court. You're playing half court basketball. It it shouldn't be a league. I did it with my friends. I never at one time was I like, hey, we should put this on television. How's this going when gangster rapper Ice Cube comes through here to meet you for the first time and this tape is uh, ending up on his lap? as he comes in here to promote his league? I disagree. I, I, I think it's another sport. Baseball and softball seem very similar. Different sports, different balls, throw underhand instead of overhand, different sports. So why isn't this not a different sport? It's not. It's a worse version of what we've come to know. It's been perfected over several decades. Basketball is basketball, and you tried to do it with trampolines, and that was oh, oh that was that dope. was pretty that rad. Was that was dope. That slam was ball dope. was no slam ball was slam red. Was I was there on Spike every week. What are you yeah. talking about? Yeah. That was totally different. Yeah, totally different. Absolutely right. I just don't understand. At a time when audiences are declining, when we're all competing for a shrinking pool, the solution is more lesser sports. Like, let's do more, more leagues, but use fewer athletes. That's going to solve this problem. It doesn't audiences, really... Audiences aren't declining, Mina. There's just a billion channels right. now. Yeah. There's an Onion channel. There's a Chive channel. There's channels <laughs> that I didn't even know existed. <laughs> that just exists on the internet. A there is a channel that's just wait, devoted to the Titanic. The Did you know that? that? Not, not no, the movie. Oh, wait, 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 the English wait, wait, channel? Wait, 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 wait. There is an... Wait, wait. You think the Chive channel is about chives? 
No, I just thought I just heard him say the onion channel and then say there's a chive channel. And I thought he was just doing onion and chive jokes. Did I miss it? I don't get the show. I'm going to the penalty box. Wow. Uh, Titanic channel dot TV. I have a child. <laughs> ESPN Radio is presented by Progressive Home Insurance. Get your quote at Progressive.com today. Baseball season hits the halfway mark. Tune in tomorrow as the Braves host Paul Goldschmidt and the D-backs, presented by Barbasol Razors. Coverage begins at 3.30 p.m. Eastern Time on ESPN Radio, ESPNRadio.com, and the ESPN app. And now, your Sports Center update. During the 911 call, Delicia Corden, LaShawn McCoy's ex-girlfriend, said to the emergency dispatcher that she believed the invasion of her home was a, quote, setup for her being attacked. The Pro Football Hall of Fame will not acknowledge Terrell Owens individually during enshrinement weekend. Hey, sports fans. The sun is shining. The temps are rising. Summer is officially here. So grab your friends, blast some tunes, and ignite those coals. Because weather like this waits for no one. Kingsford Charcoal. Start something. For all the latest headlines and information, tune in to SportsCenter on ESPN Radio all throughout the day. More than a stool from the Clevelander on ESPN Radio. Don Lebatard. You're announcing that you will not announce that they are a good team until they've won back-to-back. Yeah. But because you are taking away all of Kevin Durant's championships in your personal record book, right. you are never allowing him to win them back-to-back, even if they win them back-to-back, thus securing that you never have to identify them as a great team. Correct. Stugats. I hate when I wander around in your head and see all the empty spaces and the tumbleweed blown around. And- <laughs> this is the Dan Lebatar Show with the Stugats on ESPN Radio. Baseball season hits the halfway mark. Tune in tomorrow as the Indians host Aaron Judge and the Yankees. Presented by Indeed, coverage begins at 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time on ESPN Radio, ESPNRadio.com, and the ESPN app. Why are you laughing while reading that? <laughs> because... I, I feel so terrible, but Roy has a headache and he's wearing sunglasses in the studio. And he my sunglasses. He's wearing my sunglasses. In I, the I, I have gr- the greatest sympathy for him. He's got it? a migraine and he just threw up into a bucket. Yeah, and I can't see because I have prescription glasses, so you uh, you are completely blurred right now. <laughs> he, right now, he pointed at me and he looked like um, Al Pacino in Scent of a Woman. <laughs> <laughs> right, he was giving you your cue to read, and he did. He, uh, not uh, more Ray Charles. That's I guess a little more than than Al Pacino. Accurate. Won't like wearing glasses anyway. without your prescription make your headache worse? Um, Roy. Well, he has a lighter prescription, so uh, I don't I don't think that's going to be the case here. All right, Roy, do we need to send you home? You just threw up in a bucket. Garen, put it on the pole. If an employee throws up in a bucket, does he have to go home? We should, bucket, we should leave him alone, and I feel terrible for even pointing attention at him. We, we have a bucket? It's the garbage can in the green room. That's oh, why oh, I ain't vomiting wait, again. All right, wait a minute. There's yes, there's vomit. vomit. No, the it's, no, no, there's vomit in the garbage can, which oh, has a bag in it. Oh, it's not on the floor. It's not on the lid of the garbage Why can. Why are you it's getting mad at Roy for throwing up? Roy, you had to throw up. No, it's going to smell super yucky now. Take that Very outside. Yucky. Ugh. Very yucky. Ew. It'll, it'll get changed after the show. Who? I'll after the show? show? I'll do it. I'll do it. <laughs> oh, I'm going to vomit. I'm currently, I'm vomit. Well, I'm I'm currently vomit. doing my job. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> all right. During, Thanks, all, right, during all of this. <laughs> Here we go. Here comes the... Gint- you guys are trying to get me to gag is what you're going to try and do. Oh, right. Hey, Dan. Hey, Dan. It's okay. Let's let's talk seriously. Now I'm going to have to play the vomit rejoin next. Yes. All right. Don't do that to me. I will get contagious. Hold on. Slow it down. I want to talk to Mina about Russell Okun and what's going on with the Chargers and business and guaranteed contracts. And I want to do that, but I can't do it because Stugatz has escalated. Stugatz, what Stugatz has done, Stugatz has escalated this feud with the Baldwin brothers from vacation because he could not bear to not be on the air while we were having a feud. Mike, what did Stugatz do? You guys were telling me during the break. That Stugatz has fouled up. Allison has been working all night on a plan. Billy spent all night. Billy, get that note that you wrote last night to make fun of Daniel Baldwin because it was a great note. And I want to, and to love Daniel Baldwin because we love the Baldwin brothers, even though they're arrogant egomaniacs. We were approaching an armistice, really, with the Baldwin family. Mm -hmm. There was a peace offering in the works. 
we were approaching ceasefire, right? And uh, Sugatz, who's been jealous because he left, the last thing he heard on his way to vacation was Alec Baldwin calling you a cheesecake face. And this was the height. And he's like, oh, man, I'm going to miss so much fun. And to a degree, he has missed a large amount of fun. He wants to be in it. Sugatz is always the guy. You, we have that live read. He likes to be in the middle of the action. Yeah. Right? Just not here. So Just on, on Golich and Wingo. This guy's on vacation. And he calls into Golich and Wingo, right? Golish, Golish. He's what did we establish there on Golic and Wingo? Golich. They're, Golich. they're Serbian, Golich. no, Gol- Slovenian. My bad. So it's like it ends. You know, Goran Dragic also it's Serbian, bad, uh, Slovenian. So it ends the same way, Golich. So he goes on Golich and Wingo, and he escalates this whole thing. When we're trying to, you know, calm everything down, he just, you know, tears uh, Daniel Baldwin up. On this uh, Golich and Wingo hit, we're escalating tensions when we're over here trying to calm things down, and we're trying to get a hold of them to tell them to stop. Our calls are going straight to voicemail because yeah. he only has time so for wait, Golich. So wait, but are you disturbed at all? This two guys is so tired because he wants to go on vacation. He needs to go on vacation. He's on every damn show when he goes on vacation. And to this particular point, we are trying. We thought we were being clever, right? And here comes Stugatz barreling in we thought i got it buddy yeah i got it i'll take care of the baldwins buddy that's exactly right thank you so guillermo the note that we what can, what can we say about our peace offering mike what can we tell the people has it has it arrived yet has the peace offering? it has it has arrived and i'd like to turn the microphone over to allison turner who led this mission um, is she mad piece. at Stugatz? She hates Stugatz. Oh, okay. She always yeah. mad at Stugatz. Yeah. But uh, did he botch this one up, Allison? What happened here? Because you have been working all night on something that was clever and it was good. What happened? I mean, he's the worst. He's the worst. I mean, it is unbelievable. It's not unbelievable. It is. It's totally believable. The believable. story you're about to tell yeah. is totally he believable. <laughs> he sucks. I'm so he's annoyed. The worst. He's just the worst. And he's tough. Like, the, the, all and he's the, dumb. No, these just these. Just this whole room is annoying with the vomit noises. Okay, all, all right, really okay. Let's not get the one irritation at a time from you. Thank you. One irritation, one complaint with human resources at a time. What happened with Stugat? Stugatz went on Golik and Wingo Golich. yesterday, Golich and Wingo, and basically ripped Daniel. We're trying to make a peace offering. We're trying to keep it light, keep it happy, whatever it is. And Stugatz goes on there. Oh, what has he ever done? Blah, blah, blah. Whatever he what does. What has he ever done is what he hit him with. Yeah, he just did, he did Stugatz. And I mean, basically, honestly, what yeah, has he ever yeah, done? Yeah, yeah. It's his fourth famous Baldwin, all the Baldwins. <laughs> Daniel, we're going to be upset. We're not, now we're the show that gets mad that Daniel Baldwin is mad at us. Come on. Yeah, and kind of, Daniel Baldwin, I'm get out of here! Guts. Why were you guys trying to broker peace with the Baldwins to begin with? Can someone explain? I that? wasn't trying to broker peace yeah, with the Billy. Baldwins. Hey, 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 Billy, it's two gods. Dan respects <laughs> and admires Alec Baldwin. Okay. Oh. And, and this resulted. This whole feud resulted in Alec Baldwin, the person in that family that Dan actually respects. Uh, calling him cheesecake well, face. What, no, that's not how it started. How it started is something happened with Daniel Baldwin, and I said, which one was he? Because I don't know how many Baldwins there are. Do you know how many Baldwins there are? Four. Okay, I didn't know that. And so w- when I ask people how many Baldwins are they, what they do every time is there's Alec, there's Billy, there's Stephen, and and that's where Daniel resides. Dan, and Stephen. And Billy, probably. They all reside in the same place. So anyways, they're insulted by us making fun of their careers. And then Alec Baldwin, in the most Hollywood Alec Baldwin way ever, Mm -hmm. like says that we shouldn't uh, do comedy that way, that mocking others is not the way to do comedy, which is... The the man who does the Trump impersonation. Correct, but he's doing it with no sense of irony. It's amazing. It's like, listen to this, so that you... Listen to this, because Mina's going to be as stunned by it as we were. We just want to play with the Baldwins. We think it's funny. And for the listening audience, the first voice you're going to hear is Daniel, and then Alec will rejoin after he answers the door. Can you understand that when you're in the in the position that we're in, and, her, and and of course my brother Alec way more than me, but but still he so his version. Hi, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm there. I was right. agreeing. Anyway, so, Good. So, so, but the point is that is that the the you know making fun of people, tearing people down, you know uh, that that's that's uh, uh, that's a pretty kind of a base uh, uh, approach. You know, and, and like I said, who cares? You know, if I sat there and I really let all the different things people have said about me, 
affect me, you know, much of the time. But I wouldn't leave my house. You know, you got you wouldn't be able to function. So, what's this guy's name? Dan? What? <laughs> <laughs> my point exactly. Uh, what's his name? Yeah, I, don't, I don't know who this guy is, and who, who cares? Let him say whatever he wants to say. He, he's the guy trying to make a living. And what he does is he makes a living putting people down. <laughs> that's, that's kind of sad, isn't it? That's what, that's Dog exactly. barks. The parade parade moves on. I'm sorry. Uh, two thoughts. He's also the parade. He thinks the Baldwins are the parade. They all sound the same. Well, I, that's I, the I, joke I just, we've been making for three days. Oh, have you been? Doing Would you like a, to talk to all of them? They're here. We're all here. Hey, it's Alec. Is it Steven? Which is one? It <laughs> is it Danny? Who am I? Am I Doug? No, I'm not Doug. I'm Alec. You're clearly not Doug. Yeah. I'm Daniel. Doug, the Filipino Seahawk wide receiver. I'm Daniel. Tripped you. I'm Alec. <laughs> the whole time I was Alec. <laughs> so I'm the best one. <laughs> uh, <laughs> more money, more problems. Mina, we're going to escalate this thing because Stu Gatz has really screwed this up. Stu Gatz is now, well, not we're going to escalate this thing. Stu Gatz has already escalated this thing. Don Lebatard. He is now eating it out of my hand like a yeah. grazing animal or something. Yes, oh, he is yes, showing yes, love. Oh, oh, eat the picture. Oh, yes. Man, swallow. No, he's not going to swallow that. Stu Gatz. What just happened there? I finished. You just threw out a slobbered piece of my face no, on that the was just, floor. That was just a slobbered piece. Back in. I got a weak stomach, man. Tear me off half of that, Stu. I want to get involved. Oh, no. No, no. Uh, no, 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 no. There's you no way you can I'm do kidding. it. think I'm kidding. Fact, the fact that you're holding <laughs> I think I'm kidding. I'm not kidding. <laughs> if he eats that piece of it. If, I already ate the piece of it. If he eats that piece of it. If he eats that piece of it. I will vomit. This is the Don Levatar Show with the Stugats on ESPN Radio. ESPN Radio is presented by Progressive Insurance. The Dan Levitar Show is brought to you by Pennzoil Synthetics, taking synthetic motor oil performance to a whole new level. Make the switch to Pennzoil Synthetics today. Guests on the Dan Levitar Show appear via the Shell Pennzoil Performance Line. And now, your Sports Center update. During the 9 11, 9, sorry. Oh, oh. <laughs> I, okay, wait, let me explain myself. I'm thrown because Mike uh, very ki- sweetly played this song, which my husband actually produced. It's called Jet Black, and I was kind of bopping to it. During a 911 call, Delicia Corden, LaShawn McCoy's ex girlfriend, said to the emergency dispatcher that she believed the invasion of her home was a setup for her being attacked. The Pro Football Hall of Fame will not acknowledge Terrell Owens individually during enshrinement weekend. Finally, Scientists have invented artificial intelligence from DNA. That won't backfire. Caltech researchers made a neural network out of DNA that can recognize handwritten numbers. Hey, sports fans. (laughs) The sun is shining. The temps are rising. Summer is officially here. So grab your friends, blast some tunes, and ignite those coals. What am I doing? Because weather like this waits for no one. Kingsford Charcoal. Start something. You're, you're For all the latest headlines and information, don't interrupt me, Dan. Tune in to Sports Sorry. Center on ESPN Radio all throughout the day. Crushed it. You did. You <laughs> did. Bomani Jones with us now. A lot of stuff I want to talk about with uh, with him. Uh, just before we get to him, though, Mina just said, I saw the good-looking Baldwin in the L.A. airport. And, of course, I asked which one. And then she says the sedated one. And I'm like, which one is the sedated one? That's actually how that went, Mike. Yeah, it's me. Me. Who, who are you? Guess. Well, I know who I saw. I want to know who you think it was. The handsome one? Yes. Who's the handsome one? You, are you thinking it's Billy? Yes, it's, it was Billy. It's not. It's Alec. It's me. Oh! It's been All right. So uh, when, we have diff- when we have difficult things to talk about I'm around the actor. here. That's what I do. Uh, we go to Bomani Jones because I don't know what what am I supposed to do as a media member. And thanks, Bo, as always, for making time for us. You can catch him on High Noon here in a little bit. Noon. High Noon. You can catch him. Uh, but... What am I supposed to do with this LaShawn McCoy story? How do I talk about it? First of all, I would like to say I love the fact that my job here is to be the one to do this so nobody else gets fired. <laughs> I, 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 that, is a, that is a brilliant role to have within this operation. Here's what we do with the LaShawn McCoy story. It's actually pretty simple. All we got to do is wait. <laughs> like, that's the only thing we have to yeah. do. Here's my like, The thought that I have about it is, Our industry is basically a futures market. Like, what we do is we get on the air, we get on whatever, and we talk about what's going to happen. It's in large part because we talk about sports for people who are ultimately going to gamble. 
So what we always want to do is we want to get out in front of the story and tell people where the story is going. And so on this one, you call the NFL, and we're like, hey, NFL, do you have a statement about LaShawn McCoy? And then they roll out that we're aware of the situation and monitoring it and everything else. In the end, yo, man, if this is what it may appear to be, depending on your angle, he's going to jail for years and years and years. We won't have to do anything about it if that happens. And if, look, my thought, if he gets arrested or indicted for this, he will immediately be released because he's an old running back, as Ray Rice would have to old running back. He'll immediately be released. The legal system will take care of it, and he'll probably never play again. Like, that's probably how this thing's all going to play out. But for the issue itself, all we've got to do is find out if he did what he's been accused of. Bomani, we talked about this yesterday, and I said the same thing. Right now it's a news story, like not a commentary story, right? It keeps showing up on our morning call sheet for HQ. We keep not talking about it because it's not something you take on yet. However, I want to know what you think. With these stories, with uh, you know domestic violence or sexual assault, there's always a point at which we decide we're comfortable flipping from news to commissary, right? Like, because look, they don't go to court. It's not going to happen. We're not going to get a judgment. There's never that 100 percent. Okay, he did it or he didn't. At what point do you feel like you are you are comfortable weighing in on it? I would feel comfortable weighing in on it when I felt confident based on what information had been presented that there was a crime that had been committed, and then we can go from there. My problem with the subsequent commentary that comes from it is we wait till the commentary is amazingly easy. And then when the commentary is easy, we all jump in. Like, I remember um, I was watching the Penn, the Paterno movie that HBO did on the plane last week, and I remember that story, and it got to be so exhausting and overwhelming to do the story because everybody knew what the right answer was, right? The right answer, molesting children is bad. But you can't differentiate yourself by saying uh, molesting children is badly. So you have to be the loudest person to talk about how bad it is to molest children, because that's the only way that you can stand out in the midst of the commentary. So when this becomes a commentary story, what commentary is it that I'm supposed to make, especially for these people who tell me I'm supposed to stick sports all the time? Like, am I supposed to come give the obvious answer? It is wrong to send somebody to beat up your girlfriend to get her out of the house. Well, what do you do? I'm wondering, when you say it's easy to jump in, jump in in commentary, Bomani Jones with us. Again, High Noon with Pablo Torre. You should watch it at noon here in an hour and 20 minutes. Go find it. High Noon, ESPN. But when you say it's easy to jump in and we all jump in when it's easy, isn't the media's job in the real world, not in this fake sports world of ours, but isn't the media's job to jump in before then, to jump in before it's easy? It is our job to do that, but most people are hired to do this job based on their ability to talk about sports and their ability to gather information around locker rooms and organizations. They're not really built to talk about this on larger, more in more nuanced states. Like that, that's not the way that they're there. So yeah, our job should be to be able to have what are the difficult conversations that surround this. It just so happens with this McCoy story. There's nothing difficult here. Like with Ray Rice, for example, there was a very interesting and difficult conversation that I don't think a lot of people got on, which was Ray Rice did everything that we wanted him to do to absolve himself after the fact of what he did. I think atone is probably a better word than absolve. But he did everything that you could ask somebody to do in a very similar vein to the way that Tim Hardaway did everything you could ask somebody to do after he embarrassed himself talking to you about gay players in the NBA. But Guys do this. Ray Rice never got another job. Tim Hardaway did this. We rarely went back and checked in on what these things are. So, like, after the egregious act has taken place, that's where the interesting things come in about how it is exactly that we're supposed to handle it. But, I mean, it gets scary because you've got so much to lose just in the name of making a point. You know, uh, the guy at Oregon State, that pitcher there, I think there were probably some interesting discussions to be had around that discussion. Man, ain't nobody want to get anywhere close to being that the was one hard. to be like. How, how do you discuss that? How do you discuss the Oregon State pitcher who is a convicted uh, child offender, a sexual offender, and he's one of the best baseball prospects? How the hell do you talk about that story? And the answer in public is that we really don't. Like, Sports Illustrated wrote the story about it, and the reaction to it I think was kind of mixed because everybody – Nobody wants to feel like they're the person that's saying that it's okay, right? Or nobody wants to be the first in line to be, for whatever reason, to say, you know, maybe we should, you know, forgive and move on from this situation. Whether or not you should or shouldn't is its own discussion. But ain't nobody really trying to be the person at the front of the line to say that on something where everybody knows that the answer is to jump on and pounce. Like, everybody is aware that that's what it is that you're supposed to do. So, yeah, media should be able to do this, but also in fairness to media, 
do we have an audience that is capable and willing to have those discussions that we're talking about, or is the audience here because they enjoy pouncing on the easy target? And I think a lot of it is the latter. Yep, it's hard to argue with. The Right Time with Bomani Jones podcast, you want to check that out because there is no one like him doing it. On the ESPN app, Apple Podcasts, you check that out. Also, High Noon, him and Pablo Torre in an hour and 20 minutes. Bo, thank you as always for your time. Appreciate it. Oh, man, I was about to say the other offer thing, which is I was not offended by what Papa John did on that phone call. All right, more from Bomani Jones next. (laughs) Cash more of the Dan Levatar Show with the Stugats. 10 to 1 Eastern on ESPN Radio and ESPN News. Is your home an ADT home? Get ADT and help protect against break-ins, fire, and carbon monoxide. For a limited time, get ADT's lowest rate starting at just $28.99 a month from the most trusted name in home security. ADT is the first security company to help keep you safe at home and when you're on the go. Go to ADT.com slash podcast to take advantage of ADT's lowest rate. With 36-month monitoring contract, early termination and installation fees apply. Excludes taxes and fees. Applies to traditional services only. Certain markets excluded. Licenses available at ADT.com. Every week during the baseball season, ESPN's premier baseball insider joins Dan and his two guys to drop some hardball knowledge and take your calls. Two plus two, I'm going to undress you. Three and three, you're going to undress me. Four and four, we're going to freak some more. Here is Dan Levitard, his two guys, and Tim Kirchen on ESPN Radio. ESPN Radio is presented by Progressive Insurance with insurance for cars, home, boat, motorcycles, RVs, and commercial vehicles at 1-800-PROGRESSIVE and Progressive.com. Guests on the Dan Levitard Show appear via the Shell Pennzoil Performance Line. And now your Sports Center update. Charles Oakley was arrested for committing a fraudulent act in a gaming establishment. A felony after reportedly pulling back a $100 chip when he realized he was going to lose his wager. Very Stugatian. Isaiah Thomas has agreed to a one-year, $2 million deal with the Denver Nuggets. And finally, people in Italy actually find the number 13 lucky. For them, the unlucky day is Friday the 17th. Okay. Hey, sports fans. The sun is shining. The temps are rising. Summer is officially here. So grab your friends, blast some tunes, and ignite those coals. Because weather like this waits for no one. Kings for charcoal. Start something. For all the latest headlines and information, tune in to Sports Center on ESPN Radio all throughout the day. Show is moving very fast. Our feud with the Baldwin brothers is escalating. Uh, I want to get to this guaranteed contract story. Uh, Mike Ryan says that the Isner match is popping. Mike Ryan just put on a shirt of Amin El Hassan uh, failing at American Ninja Warrior. It is a wonderful shirt. Uh, you can, uh, <laughs> where did you get that? I just saw you put it on. Where Where did you acquire? We'll get to Tim Kirch in a second. Your baseball calls, your etiquette calls, whatever you got, your life calls, life philosophy, 786-456-4837. Tell us, A, where you got that shirt and what's happening with Isner. Isner said it's popping. Okay. He's serving for the match right now. Is he going to get it? No, this ain't, yeah, is there my boy, USA, USA, USA. You can't tell the difference between Isner and Anderson. They're both wearing hats. They're just, they're just giant, tall, lanky both, serving machines. Yeah, serving monsters. This was a, a crazy set because Isner got broken, which is hard to do. And then Anderson, who's been even tougher to break, got broken by Isner, the guts, the chutzpah that John Isner has. Where'd you USA. get that shirt? A listener. Okay. The listener sent it. They need it. No, I like it though. This one's cute. Is it white in the back? Yeah, it's, it's just like, like a, a different it color. Has a message on it. Two dollars. Oh, you know, two dollars to Dan Levitard. Show. All right, let's get to Tim Kirch and Tim. In the history of this network, has anyone who has worked at this network not known your name? Um. Yeah. Sure. Um. I've been there a long time, so maybe I'm sure early on people had no idea who I was early my on. first several years there. All right, so what you're talking about 1980s, 19, 1990s, early 90s? I started in 98 at ESPN, and yes, those first couple years, I was a writer solely before then, so I'm sure a lot of people at ESPN did not, had no idea who I was. Tim, I'd like to clarify Dan's question. He didn't mean know your name. He means know how to pronounce your name. Have you run into people at ESPN who well, don't know well, how to and, pronounce your name? And I was trying name. to protect Mina. Mina yesterday, she works for ESPN. She's on the radio. She's whole, you know, she's hosting Golich and Wingo in a couple of weeks, and she doesn't know your name. 
I, I know I just didn't know how to pronounce it, which must be, you know, that has to have happened before, right, Tim? Uh, well, it's happened a million times, but um, not mm-hmm. by anybody who works at ESPN for a while, because I've been there for a long time. I could care less. My name is Boo Chambi, and I once had a contest to see whose name was more difficult to spell and pronounce, and I think I won, although he claims he still won. So your name was harder to pronounce than SEC Booger. <laughs> Anyway, I mean, uh, no, you you insulted the king of our network. Tim Kirch is a kind man. Everyone loves him. You don't know his name, and he just really upbraided you, and you deserved it. Like, he told you, well, no, if you work at ESPN, if you work at ESPN, you know how to pronounce my name because I'm bleeping Tim Kirch, and I've been there since 1998. That was a good joke. Unbelievable. Does Jeff Fisher look like when he's asked, what are you doing? He says, saving the world as he's throwing an empty beer can into a recycling bin. That does strike me as what uh, Jeff Fisher and his grandiose <laughs> thoughts would be. Let's go call, let's call to Kevin. Kevin, you're on with Kirkson. Go ahead. Hey, Tom. Uh, diehard Cardinal fan. I realize they're probably not in a World Series hunt this year, so do you see them moving any of their key pieces, specifically Matt Carpenter, before the deadline? Um, I don't. It's a winnable National League wild card. Spots are still open. They're the Cardinals. They usually don't give up when they when there's still a chance. So I don't see them dealing Carpenter or a major piece. I think they're going to try to add, not subtract. Nick, you're on with Kirkson. Go ahead, Nick. Hey, Timmy. Indians pitcher Adam Plutko entered the game on Wednesday with a save. He still recorded a save. Can you, the human embodiment of BaseballReference.com, recall a more lopsided example of a rules loophole. A 17-run lead the dude entered with, and he got a save, Tim? Yeah, those are the rules, and we've had a couple of those this year. Uh, of course, um, in the 30-3 to game, we had a save many years ago, so a team won by 27 runs, and the guy got the save. Um, so these are the rules. If you pitch three innings effectively, at the end of a game, and you finish a victory, you get a save, and that's how it works. Is that the greatest and weirdest w- uh, rule loophole in your sport? What's the other one? Uh, th- I mean, that's certainly a weird one to win a game by 27 runs and get a save. Um, the whole, I'm not going to get into this, I can't explain, it's too complicated, but there are ways that team, unearned, team runs against the team can be unearned but a pitcher who comes into the game during all this can have the runs earned against his personal record, and all the runs against the team are under. That's very complicated, but that's a weird rule. Tim, uh, something else that isn't complicated is being an ESPN employee and knowing how to pronounce <laughs> your name. Tim Kirkajan. That's how Mina was. Come on. That's how she pronounced it yesterday. Tim Kirkajan. <laughs> Yeah, there's a lot of extra I's put in between the K and the J. There's a lot of Kirkajins going, but Kirkajan is is kind of a new one from an ESPN employee. Unbelievable, Mina. Mina. I don't care, Mina. She wins awards for news reporting all those years, and I clip out box scores for a living. It doesn't matter. I don't care. Tim Kirkajan. Oh, he's being so nice that I didn't feel bad yesterday, but now you should feel, I feel bad. Really you should, bad. Phil. He's an icon. He's are you blasphemed against a cathedral? I know he was. Phil, you're on with Tim Kirkjian. Kirkajan. Hey, <laughs> hey, Tim, it's Phil. Uh, I just want to know if it's socially acceptable to wear socks and sandals in the summertime. Socks and sandals in the summertime. Dan, we've been over this. Uh, you can't wear socks with sandals. And for me, this isn't going for anybody else. I've never owned a pair of sandals. I will never own a pair of sandals. I've never, uh, I've never let anybody see my feet unless I'm in the ocean or a pool or in the shower or in bed. That's it. Uh, men's feet are horrendous looking and women's feet are beautiful. <laughs> women are a thousand times better looking than we are. Right. And they and it starts with their feet. And I'm not going to let anybody see my feet. No. Taylor, you're on with Tim Kirkajan. Hey, Tom. I'm sick of being alone, man. I need some help. What do I need to do? <laughs> <laughs> He's sick of being alone. He needs some um, help. What does he need to do? Oh, God. I was alone for so long. Um, you, 
I was a loser for four years in college, believe me. You just go out and find a hobby. But I, I don't have any hobbies either, so <laughs> you're in a lot of trouble, and I can't help you. Wow. You've got no advice after all those years no. you spent alone. All the years, yeah. I just, I just went and played something, and then you make new friends through playing something. That's what I did. I played baseball or basketball or golf or something. What happened, Mike? Isn't there one? What Let's happened? Let's go! USA is the best country! <laughs> yes! A 60-minute tie break. Isner serving bombs! Let's go! Uh, Tom, it's Mina. I had Garrett Richards, my ace on my fantasy team. Should I pick up Annabelle Sanchez or Edwin Jackson? <laughs> I would pick up Annabelle Sanchez. He pitched really well his last time out. Edwin Jackson is with his 13th Major League team. He's never won 20 games for any of those teams. Not in a season, but Hold career. on a second. Hold no on one... a second. Hold on a second. Mina, did you not see Mike was doing a thing with Isner? So you got in here with your fantasy question? That's you something... just looked at me and That's gave just... me tacit that... approval but to Mike ask the was question. Do... Mike was doing a bit. It was an insane tiebreaker. Guys that never get broken were getting broken left and right. Isner serving 140 miles per hour. That's a fine for Mina. No, she oh, just... should be a fine. It's a fine she question. Went... No, it's I think. a fine I'm, question. I'm, I'm, yeah. The red, white, and blue is flowing through my veins right now. I mean, okay, fine, Mina. I'm very tempted to kick you out of here. Andrew, you're on with Tim Kirchin. Go ahead, Andrew. Hey, how you doing? I have a great uh, shift proposal. Let's say we're at the end of a game, three and two, ninth inning or later, two outs. Why wouldn't the catcher actually leave behind the plate, Timmy, and actually go play in the field? If you walk a guy in, the game's over, you know, <laughs> or tie it. Why is there a rule against the catcher leaving behind the plate? The umpire may get hit. The umpire may get hit, but why doesn't he go play the field? That is a great question. What a great that, question. Uh, there is a rule against that the catcher's box has to be occupied during a pitch ball in a major league game. And that otherwise that's a great idea. I got asked the other day why on a sacrifice fly doesn't the runner run down past third base, get a running start, <laughs> time his run so he touches the bag as soon as the outfielder that's catches funny. it and now he's got a running start. That's funny. That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> and it's These because, are the questions I get asked. No, but that's a great question. It's because your foot has to be on the bag before you, you know, before the out is recorded, right? That is correct. So you have to time it perfectly to be on the bag, uh, certainly after the guy catches it, and then you take off for the plate. Does Stan Van Gundy look like the guy in the public restroom who only washed his hands because you walked in and caught him before <laughs> he could leave? <laughs> what? Does, what is the pizza? Is he, he's the pizza, pizza delivery box. box. Yes, he's also on a pizza <laughs> delivery box. Does Adnan Verk look like the, confu- the confused dad in a car commercial wondering why his generic minivan isn't up to par as his neighbor's new <laughs> Buick Enclave? <laughs> Does Field Yates look like he yells outlet when playing basketball? <laughs> Does Rob Palenka look like a wax sculpture of Rob Lowe? He does, right? You guys have noticed this, right? He looks just oh, like Rob, Rob Lowe. Does Craig Council look like the husband on House Hunters with only one thing on his wish list, that the house is under budget, only to finally choose the one house that is slightly over budget? Isn't that the truth? Council looks like that, right? Yeah, he does. He looks like a lot of, a lot of people. He is so great, Craig Council. Oh, my gosh. Uh, you are too, Kirk John. Thank you for being on with us, sir. Okay, see you guys. Don Lebertard. Mike, for some reason, I saw you in the room there working on what I thought was your Andrew Luck. I wasn't sure. I walk into the room, and of course, what they're talking about is who in sports would you call to rescue your life if you were in a threatening situation and feel like you were going to actually be rescued? And so he's working on his Andrew Luck. So let's go ahead and play it out. Stugatz. Well, you know, it's not something I, I want to do, but I, absolutely, it'll save your life. <laughs> <laughs> Repel down this cave. I'll, I'll neutralize the threat. I'll, 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 I'll secure the perimeter. I'll, I'll, you know, get you back to your beautiful wife. I'll, I'll, happy wife, happy life. You know. 
<laughs> Jack Doyle. This is the Dan Levatar Show with the Stugats on ESPN Radio. We need to get to why Allison is mad at Stugats and the escalation of the Baldwin feud. But before we do that, so in football, these football players, it happens every year since the basketball players started getting paid. Every year, uh, the basketball players get all this guaranteed money and the football players are like, we should get guaranteed money. Two And Russell Okung is saying, my money should be guaranteed. And everyone is agreeing with uh, with them. Or Mina feels like everyone is agreeing with them. Why is everyone getting it wrong? Sorry, I'm still shook by Billy antagonizing me during the break. All right, well, if you want to talk about that, let's talk about that then. No, I'm sorry. No, let's, no, no, uh, Mina, no, Mina. I wanted to apologize for my mind state. Mina, you can't. You can't say what Billy did to you during the break. That's Three right. people know it, and and none of the people <laughs> listening know what you're talking about. Uh, during the break, Billy told Dan that uh, it, well, Dan had just complimented Mike. Uh, you know, he's been throwing out a lot of compliments lately. I've noticed that too. And he said, "You're like the t- the parent who thinks all of your children, everything they do is perfect." And I said, "Well, he was just roasting me." And Billy looked me straight in the eyes and said, "You're not part of the family. <laughs> you're the stepsister." You're like the adopted child. Billy? Am I wrong? When he's right, he's right. right. When you're right, you're right. There, it was, the feud is back on. That's I all. mean, you're kind kind of family, but not really. They go way back in that when Mina got here, she chose the meekest one and attacked oh. him. Like, like, prison, like a reverse prison yard. I forgot, though. Like, I haven't been able to hold on the feud and keep it going. Like, I don't, I haven't had, like, a consistent, I haven't called back to it, kept it on. I, I can't, like, stay angry at people, and I can't keep it going. Uh, guarantee contracts. So, Todd Gurley, also, he was You're kind of aware of how awkward going. you made all of that, right? Yeah, You're aware of, like, that's why, that's why if someone <laughs> were to accuse you of not being a part of the family, that's where the accusation would start, right? Because I was getting into Russell Okung and your business know, expertise and sports commentary, and you can be different than others, and you stopped everything in its tracks to, to reveal an inside joke between <laughs> just you and Billy on air that you then didn't want to explain. The problem was the the funniest thing was something Chris said that I don't think I can say on air. <laughs> Chris knows it. Uh, and so as I was telling the story that was dawning on me, you can't actually... So again, you're doing the thing where you've got a story to tell that you can't tell people? on the radio um <laughs> mike's rolling his eyes at me todd Gurley, said, mike help us out i mean can we get to some content here Please. come on okay, let's do the the okun thing We've okay trying to set that okay up. so yeah todd Gurley. <laughs> oh the magic box of content the magic crate great fine that's too bad that we can't get to that. It really is unfortunate. I thought it was pretty good. So Mina, who is playing the role of Stugatz, whenever the magic crate of content music begins, we have to stop everything we're doing and go into the crate to receive a magical question from the magic crate of content. You are not allowed to No, 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 you, no, no, no. You, you, you rummage and you hand it down. Come on. Wow. Those are the rules. Mina, it's, it's why if someone yeah, if someone were to say that you're not a member of the family, it would be for reasons like that. Talk about how weird it is that Hulk Hogan brought down Gawker. <laughs> That's great. It's a great question for Mina. She's the business reporter. We might actually be able to get some content out of her this segment instead of just incompetence. Did you hear the question, Mina? Roy was in my ear telling me. Oh my God. Well, here we go. <laughs> Did you hear the question? Yes. How weird is it that Hulk Hogan brought down Gawker? Can you answer the question instead of whatever Roy said in your ear? Why are you blaming Roy if you heard the question? So fine. Just keep him moving. I, I I don't think it's that weird. I think it's kind of where things are going right now, right? With the press and the way um, people are... The sort of there's been a few of these frivolous lawsuits. The same guy, I believe, is funding a lot of them. Who funded? It wasn't. Uh, well, Peter Thiel is obviously involved, but there's not. They're not. But they're they're good lawsuits. They're not. Right. Oh right. Well, yeah. In this case, I mean, there was obviously some substance to it. Uh, That's not a frivolous lawsuit. Hulk Hogan. A lot of ended, the ones he is doing are though. Uh, but Hulk Hogan ended Gawker. Yes. That's crazy. They made a mistake. They made a mistake. But I do think this has like a chilling effect you know, on other media outlets who are afraid of the time and energy it takes to defend unserious lawsuits with no merit to them, which is something that 
you do you have seen increasingly happening. I'll say it. It's what weird. It is so weird. Isn't it the weirdest? Why is that so serious? It's so weird. It's a- it, Hulk Hogan Hulk ended Hogan. a media entity with the leg drop. Suburban Commando. And, and, and yes, that's right. And, and yes, sleeper allegedly with Bubba the Love Sponge's wife. Oh, I thought you were talking about the sleeper hold that Roddy Piper won the WCW championship off him from. Not as impressive as body slamming Andre the Giant. Don Libertard. What's the single most important thing the ego have to do to beat the Patriots? Stugats. So get to Brady with four, is what it sounded like. Put pressure on Brady. <laughs> we find out if Mina Kimes is still alive next. This is the Don Lebatar Show with the Stugats on ESPN Radio. ESPN Radio is presented by Progressive Insurance. Guests on the Dan Lebatar Show appear via the Shell Pennzoil performance line. Want to sit courtside at a Mavs game with Mark Cuban? Or announce a pick at the 2019 NFL Draft? Have an amazing experience with us here in Miami. Bid now at ebay.com slash ESPN, ESPN on over 80 once-in-a-lifetime experiences. It all benefits the V Foundation for Cancer Research, the ESPYs Auction, now through July 18th at ebay.com slash ESPN. And now, your Sports Center update. Charles Oakley was arrested for committing a fraudulent act at a gaming establishment, a felony after reportedly pulling back a $100 chip when he realized he was going to lose his wager. Isaiah Thomas. <laughs> it is funny. That, <laughs> that, that, what do you do if, if like, Joe Pesci and Casino, Joe, uh, Charles Oakley just wants his money back? You just give him his money back, right? Not a lot Not a lot you can do with that. Isaiah Thomas has agreed to a one-year, $2 million deal with the Denver Nuggets. And finally, President Lyndon B. Johnson owned an amphibious car and would scare his guests by driving it into a lake while screaming about brake failure. What? That can't be true. With GNC Auto Deliver and Save, don't worry about missing a daily dose of your favorite products. Set up your free subscription and enjoy free shipping and 10% off the order. Quality shipped. Wellness delivered. Via G- visit GNC.com or a store near you to learn more. For all the latest headlines and information, tune in to SportsCenter on ESPN Radio all throughout the day. Roy, you're on television opening a box of hats, a box of hats that might have a logo that has been sent to us simply because those people want their logo worn by our show. What is the what is the group of hats you have on your uh, in your hand? This is for Ooh. Team Rubicon Disaster Response. We are going to be showing these off at 12:45 for a billboard. Oh. Oh, okay. Yeah, and, and right now, and right, and right now. now. But okay. when we show them off, we're taking it. The hat, it's a hats off. Okay, all right. So it's yeah. a thing. It's not just somebody because the listeners have been sending us gifts lately. You were wearing. An Amin El Hassan. Yeah. Lately, the listeners have been sending you. The crate of content is a gift from a listener. Yeah, it's incredible. You don't have to call out every car that passes by. Yeah. So the V Foundation <laughs> is doing something now with us. And Mike, you were saying that uh, what Mina was reading during the break, that's something that we got to tell people about. Last year, we got uh, a lot of people paid a lot of money to watch a heat game with my father and with Stugatz. Yeah, and we're adding something to it. You get the uh, original artwork that uh, C. Solano did during our NBA Finals watch party. So you get that wonderful painting. You get to hang out with us in our studio while we're doing the show. You get to watch Highly Questionable tape. Then you go to a Miami Heat game, and you get a wonderful experience. There are all sorts of goodies that go with, along with that. And you get to watch a Heat game with Stu Gatz, Dan, Poppy. Last time you brought Pablo Torre around, it was it was really cool. Well, the, the last couple of times, the, the people, I'm not promising this, but the last couple couple of times the people have been able to meet Pat Riley, been able to meet uh, Mickey Arison, been able to meet some people as well. We don't promise that, but that has happened the last couple of the times. The celebrities just sort of hang around Dan, Dan Levitard. Oh. And if you're hanging around Dan Levitard, you yeah. might see a celebrity or two. Who yeah. knows? Go to ebay.com slash ESPN. Right now, we are the third most bid on experience. I don't think anyone's wow. topping, the, uh, topping the opening of Star Wars Galaxy Edge at uh, the Walt Disney World Resort. So many Star Wars fans are doing that. That's an amazing auction item. But there's this pitch lunch with Dallas Mavericks owner Mark Cuban that's ahead of us by money. just a uh, 100 bucks or so. And now if you want to bypass a whole Shark Tank tank experience maybe do that I, it might be a business uh deposit that you're putting on this lunch but it, hanging out with us we gotta really beat cool. everybody we have the most bids, everybody but way. star wars uh right now we're at seventy nine hundred dollars right now 71 bids most bids but well, our listeners will crush everybody the stugats army will crush everybody so go ahead and crush everybody including cuban
I think this might be a little more involved than you think, though, Dan, because the title of the experience is Live with Dan Lebetard and Stugatz in South Beach. <laughs> it's live, Billy. This says live with you guys in South Beach. <laughs> it's live. Uh, nobody's allowed to live with me. That, the V Foundation is not auctioning off the ability to live with me. Uh, a little too late to take that back. Come to Miami. You can be a part of the family, which does not include me. Um, Isner just got broken by Anderson. Anderson was fired up about breaking Isner, but did Isner break him back, Mike? Did did like this thing is crazy. This thing, this Wimbledon thing, two serving machines. This is the evolution of tennis. Just put ten foot guys out there and allow them to serve. How many miles per hour is Isner serving? Isner's record for serve is 157 miles per hour. That's a fastest. That's a third fastest serve ever. Faster than a lawnmower. That's the uh, the the fastest serve presently on tour. Third best ever. He is regularly getting up to 138, 140, and he's found a guy who can match him almost serve for serve. Who can actually return some of these serves, which is not something Isner's used to because. Because Isner might very well set the record for aces in Wimbledon. And this Anderson, super resilient. He was down two sets uh, to Roger Federer, and he came back and beat him in five with an epic tiebreaker after epic tiebreaker. Every single one of these sets is going to a tiebreaker. You're breaking Isner. Isner breaks you right back. It's been an incredible match. We're so close to having an American in the gentleman's final. You are fired up about tennis, uh, but Mina was fired up about something during the break. Ben McAdoo. Ben, our friend Ben McAdoo, uh, we've made fun of him for years. Billy, if you want to get uh, some of the Ben McAdoo's, the best looks likes on Ben McAdoo, he's a staple around here. We loved him. We will miss him as Giants coach. But Mina was saying that Ben McAdoo has now said something in public. Ben McAdoo is going to carve out the niche of former coach who actually says things about other teams because – you know how these guys protect each other, you know, whenever anybody hired – who does Ben McAdoo work for now? Who hired him? No one. So he's just out on the prowl saying crazy things? Yes, and it's not just about protecting your former colleagues. It's about trying to get a job again. Like Ben McAdoo, so he criticized all the teams in the division. This is a New York Post article, by the way. And he said uh, the Eagles weren't going to repeat because – they don't have it in them or something. Uh, the Cowboys, he criticized their defense. And his quote about Washington was, Washington is Washington, <laughs> which is so amazing as far as shade goes. Just Washington is Washington. Come on. This doesn't happen. Like a former coach who would like to get hired, especially in the future in the NFL, does not say these things, which is amazing. Unless Ben McAdoo is just angling for a media job. Well, he would then get hired and not say those things. I'd hire him. Can, do we have the power to hire Ben McAdoo hire ourselves? Yeah. Let's do that. Yeah, we should do that. Show. Let's like wait a minute. Budget. Wait a minute. Why can't well, we do that? I'll incorporate it. And I'll just make him like one of my employees. No, but so. why can't we have Ben McAdoo as the former coach that we used to make fun of, who just comes on here and actually is a coach who says stuff on television, as opposed to all the other coaches? Well, he has he has just cause to hate us because of the looks likes. Yeah. Or were they very insulting? Look, he would well, no, but we second. sort of really got the wheel turning with hey. This self-serious guy, he's kind of funny, right? I would love to hire Ben McAdoo. We're going to go to Billy right now. You tell us right now, real time, in real time, Mina, is Billy uh, Billy can can read some of the best Ben McAdoo's that he likes back there. He just ran into the other room, into the copier, where the bag full of vomit is. We have over 130 submissions, Woo-hoo. so it's a little bit of <laughs> See, that's why he doesn't like us. Okay, we have 130 submissions, but let's. Do you have any of them highlighted? Like, yeah, I have here uh, a couple of the best. Ben McAdoo looks like a pirate from an off-strip Vegas show, circa 1996. Yeah. That's a good one. That is. Ben McAdoo looks like a manager of a struggling hot tub hot tub outlet store. Accurate. Also a good one. Ben McAdoo looks like divorce. Correct. <laughs> I mean, Ben McAdoo looks like your friend who hates the NBA for being soft and not playing defense. Quote like they did when Bird played. Ah. Goes without saying. <laughs> Ben McAdoo looks like a bowler who is shown on ESPN Classic. No surprise at all. Ben McAdoo looks like the guy who has taken it upon himself to keep the condo pool free of leaves. He is that guy. Ben McAdoo looks like the guy who married the hottest girl in high school 20 years later and takes care of her six kids while she's out at the bar with her ex. Cold hard truths. Her ex is Doug Peterson. Ben McAdoo looks like a man who's been lost in Lowe's for two hours. (laughs) Gospel. (laughs) Ben McAdoo always looks like he's wearing a disguise. Preach. Ben McAdoo looks like the hot dog vendor in front of a Home Depot who scolds you for asking for ketchup. 100%. 
Ben McAdoo looks like a contestant on Wheel of Fortune. Infallible. Ben McAdoo looks like the guy who walks into Supercuts and says, I'll take the usual, and doesn't realize he has different hairstylists every time. <laughs> Put it in the stone. Ben McAdoo looks like the instructor in a 1980s bus driver training video. He was born to do that. And the last of our list of best of Ben McAdoo's bet. Oh, no. This one. Can't do that one? No, we're done with this. Mina doesn't. Uh, <laughs> Mina didn't laugh at any of them. Mina didn't like any of them. So is it? What's the verdict? Is it funny or is it not funny? Or can we hire Ben McAdoo? You know what his problem was? So he came back the second season. Outside with of his the... general aesthetic. Well, his face, his face. Is he the changed his look because <laughs> yes. of this game, yeah. and yeah. also changed well, the look I, because also, of he's his not game. a good coach. You that played into it, but and he came back in the second season with the slick back look. Do you remember that? Because yes. of this game. Because of this game. We're really going to take responsibility Mina, for that? Mina, yes. Mina, we shamed him into that. Okay. Who else Who else was? Who else was Call doing? him. He's talking. You think he was he's saying his, whatever he wants. You think he was Why brushing his teeth one day and he's like, you know what? I want a new me. What other coaches just come back with a completely new look? Come on. No, the guy. happen. No, somebody did do that. A bounty gate. The Williams did that when he came back in disguise. Oh, yeah. After he was at the head of like asking for people to be concussed, he came back wearing like a mask. That's true. <laughs> Do you guys not remember and that? And Mattingly Greg had a mustache once, and he looked totally different. Uh, Mattingly. And Bobby Valentine also used a disguise. We need to get this question to Ben McAdoo, because he's answering. He's all being right, like Allison, very... see if you can get... First of all, we're going to get to the Baldwin feud in a second with Allison. She's going to explain how Stugat screwed this whole thing up. Also, see if you can get us Ben McAdoo before the end of the show. Cash more of the Dan Levatar Show with the Stugats. 10 to 1 Eastern on ESPN Radio and ESPN News. Don Lebatard. Nobody in my life has as many unlikable traits <laughs> who I still like as Stugatz. Stugatz. Would you have taken the pay cut? No. Pay cut. Please. The hell are you talking to? This is the Don Lebatard Show with the Stugatz on ESPN Radio. Mike, isn't it cute? Isn't it cute? Nadal thinks he's going to play today. It's adorable. They're just walking to the facility thinking that they're actually going to play today. They ain't playing today. Like, oh. This is going to be 70-68. Nadal, that's going to be, when is that going to be? Monday? Yeah. The the other men's semifinal will be on Monday. Uh, they, they should just start on another court. They really should. We can go all night here. Um, I want to talk about this Russell Okung story. I do. But there was a story that you mentioned in your sports flash there that caught my attention. And Jeremy Lin, what the hell happened there? Do you remember Jeremy Lin, those 14 days of insanity? Like, what happened? He's being traded where to whom? That was a thing for 14, was it 14 games? That was a thing that I think some people thought that Jeremy Lin was going to be what James Harden ended up becoming. I don't know yeah. what the, those 14 days were weird. That was, I, I was living in New York at the time and you could just walk down the street during games in Koreatown. And if you saw another Asian person, we'd just high five. Like that was an actual. That thing. was 14 that games where, that was, and 14, we know why. There's 14 games where Koreans were running basketball. Is that, I, he's not what? Korean, obviously, but it doesn't matter. We claim, we all claimed him. It was, uh, K-Town bars were packed I, I, to say nothing of Chinatown when this was happening. It's I crazy. Knew back then. It's cr what happened? In 2012, there were back-to-back -back Sports Illustrated covers that featured Jeremy Lin on the cover. Back-to-back. Wow. Back-to-back. Mm -hmm. back. A moment in time. How Again, how many games was that? Was it indeed 14 games? At, of, at most. What a cool thing. And then he played against the Miami Heat and forgot how to dribble. You remember that? Well, you're asking what happened. That's what happened to him. That was the beginning of the end, that game. That game where he forgot how to dribble. Yeah, because people convinced themselves Lin Sanity was going to take out the big three. It was... Uh, it was like watching Piranha Feed. Yeah, he couldn't dribble. He's still pretty good. I mean, he's a capable... Yeah, no, he's a decent... He, he I, just hurt last year. He was William actually pretty good before he got hurt, as I recall. Just not Lin Sane anymore. <laughs> Did you try and get that line out while eating? What are you doing back there? Like, are we bothering you? I'm multitasking, you know. Um, the Russell Okung story, please, please, before we get to this Baldwin feud, oh. the Russell Okung story, please explain to people why it's interesting and why a lot of people are getting it wrong. There's just been 
lately, as often happens when NBA contracts start getting out, you see a lot of NFL players and the NFL sort of commentary in general talking about guaranteed contracts. Well, NFL players should have guaranteed contracts. The union is terrible. Why didn't they get guaranteed contracts? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, first of all, the union... It's not their purview, right? If a player wants a guaranteed contract, he can do what Kirk Cousins did and just get a guaranteed contract. It's not something that would be written in the CBA. The problem is uh, no team would give that to them. So this idea of, okay, well, what if there was a rule? What if, like This would solve everything. What if there's a rule saying, okay, contracts have to be guaranteed? What if we got rid of the funding rule and teams couldn't use that as an excuse anymore, which is um, has been thrown around as a reason I don't really buy it, why they don't give guaranteed contracts what if there was a rule? What if this next CBA said it had to exist? All contracts right. like basketballs yeah. are guaranteed. Well, you just get a lot of really short contracts, right? And, and for some players who have longer careers, uh, quarterbacks, you know, come to mind, a three-year guaranteed contract and the opportunity to hit the market again would be great. But I think, and I've, I've talked to a lot of um, agents and executives about this, uh, you would just see a lot of one-year deals. It wouldn't help everyone. And I, I find that's often the case with football and the NFL in general is when we criticize the union and we, and we talk about some of the bad things that have happened, the franchise tag, you know, that hurts players, the fifth year option. What people don't understand is the NFL is a zero sum game because of the hard cap. So if you make one change, somebody's going to suffer. If you get rid of the franchise tag, great. Really good players and stars are going to get paid more that as they deserve But you're going to gut the middle class even more. And it's the same thing with guaranteed contracts. Isn't this part of what Dominique Foxworth is arguing about when he says that the union should decertify? Because why wouldn't like it doesn't make any sense whatsoever that our most popular sport with all of those billionaires where Jerry Richardson shames his way out of the league with however many millions of dollars in cash and gets to keep his statue. It doesn't make any sense that that league is hard capped. It's it's a stupidity to have that league hard cap. So it yeah. denies you commerce and capitalism and the free agency that basketball is giving you. Like, it doesn't make any sense for that league to say, hey, you could put a limit on our wages. Right. And, and, yeah. And then you when you it's kind of hard to make the parody argument looking at what's happened in other sports. You people freak out the idea of get rid of the hard cap. You know, I mean, has it affected the Patriots or something? But. As far as the changing football, the only thing you can do is either expand the total pie, which is get more revenue sharing. That would be the only thing I think that would really help players or, as Dominica suggested, completely blow it up, change everything. Because there's just no other solution. But wouldn't you want total free agency in football? Wouldn't you guys want no hard cap? Wouldn't the, wouldn't the consumer, not the fan of the, not the fan of the one team, wouldn't the consumer want a frenzy on you can pay anyone you want for a year or two, whatever it is that you want for a year or two or six years or and take your chances with the injury risk? The the businessmen who run this sport would never go for that. But wouldn't that be better for the consumer? I actually think it would be good for that sport, whereas in basketball, it'd be really bad. I mean, it's bad enough as it is with a cap in terms of dominance, but football is a more random game and you have the one game samples. A team that has the highest payroll and signing the players to the biggest and best contracts will very likely not come out as Super Bowl champion. Just too much has to go right Right. in such a physical sport. And at least you'd have the opera. But there's so many cheap teams in the NFL. Like You'd have to have a floor, which exists now. It's a rolling, you know, cash floor and they, some teams still ignore it for years at a time. But if you got rid of it, you would have to have a minimum that teams spend. Otherwise, there are certain teams and Cincinnati comes to mind that just wouldn't go for it at all. The, the Bengals are the, are the most egregious offender here in football where they clearly aren't all that interested in winning. They're interested. Is there what's the greater example of Anywhere, I guess baseball has some true tankers, but the Bengals are pretty much telling you every year by by continually hiring Marvin Lewis and never changing Andy Dalton that they're not actually in it to win. If they win, it'll be nice. But what they're in it to win is dollars that they are running foot their football team like a mom and pop business. If you look at the Bengals draft, too, I I don't have their draft class in front of me, but they tend to draft guys from. Local, like guys that they have traveled by car. To the Bengals are a high school team that, that just has Andy Dalton trying to play quarterback it, with A.J. Green. It is a family business. The Browns, the, the, the Cleveland Browns are named after the family that owned the Bengals. That is a football family, and it is a family business. So the Browns aren't trying to win either, you don't think? No, I'm, I'm sorry. I was confusing people because Mike Brown, who owns the Bengals, oh, is I see. from okay. his dad, uh, I believe, was his 
his dad or grand? Well, he's related to Paul Brown, who the Cleveland Browns were named after. Football is basically named after all of these people. Yeah. And in football, the football way they is choose their business. to represent football is by only focusing on the business and never focusing on the football. No, the Bills didn't come from a guy named Bill, Chris. <laughs> really, Chris? Really? You thought the Bills came from a guy named William? First name? Billy D. Williams. A bunch of Bills. Billy D. Williams. Two Bills. <laughs> like three Bills in the family, and they're like, let's just call it the yeah, Bills. three Bills. It, is there a Baldwin who's a Bill? Is there a Bill Baldwin? There is, isn't he? Runs yeah, the Cardinals? No, the runs the Cardinals. <laughs> what? You called? Not a landsman. Bid- just kidding. Bid- it was Alec the whole time. <laughs> I was in the shadow. What is going on with show. our feud, Allison? How did Stugat screw up our feud? Are we going to finally get to this next? Because the whole thing is escalated with the Baldwins. Allison has been listening to the Daniel Baldwin radio show in Syracuse. We've been trying to get a hold of Stugat, who claims his reception's bad. Of course. But he's been texting me about John Isner You're for right. the last right. two hours. His reception's bad, except if Golich and Wingo are calling. <laughs> they, they call, and he goes. He runs right on there. What are you asking? What's where are, where does our feud stand? Like where did, did has Baldwin did? Can we talk about our gift? Can we talk about the note? We can we wrote? talk about the gift. And we can talk about the note. And we can talk about Stugatz just sabotaging everything. Excellent tease. Usual. All right, we're gonna do. All right, we're gonna do that next. Raindrop, drop top. Time to read the script for a hot spot. This is going to be a disaster next segment, right? Now, Stugatz really fouled this up. Got in the way of everything from vacation while on the Golich and Wingo show. It's Golich, right, Mike? Golich? Golich. Golich, Golich. or Golich. Golich and Wingo. That's better. Well, I like do you it. say Dragic or Dragic? Either like, way, it's fine. I like Golich and Wingo because his name has been a fraud the entire time. He's not actually Golik. ESPN has been perpetrating a fraud on the American people for 20 years. Think of it as go Leech. Oh, okay. There you go. That's what his son is doing. Don Lebatard. I mean, <laughs> what just an asinine thing that Disney pays us for. <laughs> just asinine. Thank you. Stugatz. It's a clerical error, man. <laughs> this is arriving at an accountant's desk in Disney, and then it's, wait a minute, how much is this costing us? Why? More, please. This is the Don Lebatar Show with the Stugatz on ESPN Radio. All right, so let's get to our feud with the Baldwin brothers and what Billy wrote to the Baldwin brothers and how this has escalated and where we are with Allison. Allison was trying, Allison holds our whole thing together. Mike, explain for the people who are just joining us why it is or how it is we're feuding with the Baldwins through sound. What can we, they, the Baldwins evidently are taking themselves very seriously. We do not. We don't understand how anyone other than Alec and the Baldwin family could take themselves seriously. <laughs> No, that's too hard. That's sort of how the whole thing that's started. Good. That's not how it started. It started with me asking which one was Daniel. I didn't know there was a Daniel. I didn't know that there were four of them. And then I asked to see the fat one. That's where it started. Yeah. Right. Well, we actually had the start of uh, Daniel Baldwin's radio show on Syracuse. Sort which, of it starts like literally with a roar. So here is Daniel Baldwin coming out of the gates with the music you'd expect and a literal roar. This is the Daniel Baldwin Show. Ah, there it is. That's who we're feuding with. Okay, that's the guy right there. <laughs> what was that? That's that's how Daniel Baldwin starts his radio show. We could do it again if Mina would like it because there was yeah, actually like what it, where, what did he say after the roar? I I want to go to wherever it is where, that that show that magical show goes after the roar. I mean, it, it would be considered trash talk, you know? No, I that's think, not trash talking. No, I think that's just their show. Who's the fat one? Is not trash talking. All right, so that's where we are uh, in the in the feud. That's where it started, and then Alec got involved, and it was really pompous, and it was disappointing to me because I love Alec Baldwin, and I, we've been trying to get him around here for 15 years to talk to him about a variety of different things. Was it pompous, though? He was just saying, who cares what this guy says? Like, who cares? He I was saying care. that he gets to decide what comedy is and that mm-hmm. he, he was defining comedy for us, that their way of doing the beef is better than our way of doing the beef. It was less pompous and more hypocritical, right? We. Right, because he's also Trump on television on Saturday. So, anyways, we tried to fix all of this, or Allison did, because she's always... Basically, this is a ship around here. Ship is the word. Ship. This is a ship around here that leaks oil and gas and water all the time. And if Allison doesn't plug all the leaks... What ends up happening is there's a bag of vomit in our studio. That's what ends up happening. That is true. And, and now sitting outside our Now studio. sitting outside in a garbage bag, a bag of vomit, because Roy had a headache and vomited into a box or a bucket. So during during all of this, Roy vomiting, you are sending a peace offering to the Baldwins, to Daniel Baldwin's radio studio. And uh, there's a reason why we picked a specific peace offering. It's because Alec Baldwin said this about you. 
God bless me. I mean, he wakes up every day. He looks in the mirror. He's got a face like a like a cheesecake. <laughs> and what's he going to do? I mean, he's got he's got he's got, he's got to live with that. He's, he's got a, he's got a tough cross to bear. He's he bearing does. a big well, cross. Well, you know, and the other thing, he's a human cheesecake. I mean, Alec, it's not fair because I saw you get bloated. I saw you, Alec. I saw you get bloated, and you lost the weight because you don't have the thyroid condition I have. But you lost the weight, Alec. And it's not fair for you to make fun of f fat people. Comedy is something that should only be done without mocking or at the expense of others. Excuses the lament of the loser. Okay, anyway, I knew you'd say that. So Allison is sending to William Baldwin what? Or Daniel Baldwin, excuse me. No, it's I, Daniel. I get them Billy. confused. I'm sorry. Billy. Yeah. I'm we sorry. delivered a giant cheesecake this morning. Giant. Appropriately. There were giant. people working. Well, the biggest one I could find in, you know, five minutes. The one that was closest to Dan's actual face. Right. <laughs> and so Billy wrote a note on it uh, because uh, Daniel Baldwin's career as a as an actor is very forgettable, but it's got some title roles that you might recognize uh, in Billy's note here. What were you trying to do with the note that we sent him, Billy? Well, you know, I was trying to undo all the stuff that you're currently doing now, but he's very accomplished. He has like over 130 credits on IMDb, so we thought, you know, it'd be nice to send him a note and we'll slip in some titles of some of his more memorable projects in there. So he wrote him a note, and then, you know, it got there with the cheesecakes today. And what was the note? What can you tell people about the note? Because I'll, these are all, should I tell people what the joke is? Because they might not know what the actual movie titles are that Daniel Baldwin has on his IMDb. All of these sentences will reference a Daniel Baldwin movie title of some sort. So here's the note. From one fat brother to another. Sorry for making you yesterday's target. The truth is, in pursuit of making jokes, we are often on the border of making people feel NYPD blue without considering the fallout or after effect. We meant no harm, but this was bound to happen. We we'll acknowledge that's no excuse. We should have had the wisdom to know the difference between funny and offensive. The truth is, we think you and your brothers are the real deal. <laughs> As the final move in this vendetta, no coincidence, no mercy, we scoured the neighborhood <laughs> with a devotion to make this right. Hope you will accept and enjoy the treat. Love, Cheesecake Face, Levitard. How many movie titles from Daniel Baldwin did you get in that one. note? Ah! I didn't recognize any of them. The any Force them. NYPD Blue. I, I, I didn't. I didn't re no, th there are about 40 of them in there. About 40. I think there were 16 movie titles 16. in there. Yeah, yeah, you want to try it again? Again, this is the note. This is 16 Daniel movie titles. Daniel Baldwin movie titles are on this note. Okay, I'll count them out as they're happening. Should he have his voice in a higher, like higher octave? Yes, when yes. He does yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Do it as somebody else. The, the, whatever the wherever the movie title is. Okay, so are, just change my voice in the middle. Do it as Dan. Yeah, we need a, a sonic cue. Okay, from one fat brother to another. Sorry for making you yesterday's target. Mm. The truth is, in pursuit of making jokes, we are often on the border of making people feel NYPD blue without considering the fallout or after effect. We meant no harm, but this was bound to happen. We acknowledge that's no excuse. We should have had the wisdom to know the difference be between funny and offensive. The truth is, we think you and your brother are the real deal. As the final move in this vendetta, no coincidence, no mercy, we scoured the neighborhood with a devotion to make this right. Hope you will... Accept and enjoy the treat. Love, Cheesecake Face Levitard. Will is actually, what was that 19? It was like 19 or 20. Oh I think the biggest uh, upset there was that No Excuses was not a movie. How title. is that possible? I thought for sure No Excuses would be a Daniel Baldwin headliner. I think that was a Billy Baldwin project. Okay. <laughs> I can't believe you worked in the wisdom to know the difference, by the way. That was true. That was impressive. amazing. That yeah. was the genius. The wisdom to know the difference. So anyway, Stu got screwed it all up. We'll tell you about it at some point after we talk to the face of U.S. soccer in this country. Don Levitard. But I don't know what you do with the public comments, because last time we heard from Hassan Whiteside, he's questioning the way he's used, and then 10, 10 days later he's saying publicly, I believe in all of Spoh's decisions. I believe in him. Nothing Hassan says means anything. It's it's cartoon words. Stugatz. You seem really broken up about this, man. It does seem yeah, like yeah. you're holding back tears. Yeah. yeah. You want a napkin? What's, What's going on? Because yeah. of the way I'm speaking? Yeah. 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 It sounds like I'm I'm emotional about this. Yeah. 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 That Barry Jackson report hit you hard, wow. man. <laughs> this is the Don Lebatar Show with the Stugatz on ESPN Radio. ESPN Radio is presented by Progressive Insurance. Guests on the Dan Levitard Show appear via the Shell Penzo performance line. And now your Sports Center update. 
The Nets have traded Jeremy Lin and two draft picks to the Hawks for a draft pick and the rights to Isaiah Cordonier. The Nets have also traded Isaiah Whitehead to the Nuggets for Kenneth Fareed, Daryl Arthur, and two draft picks. The Nuggets will waive Whitehead. And finally, according to the government figures in San Francisco and nearby San Mateo and Marin counties, an income of 117400 for a family of four is low income, while 73300 was very low income. The highest figures anywhere in the county or er, country to qualify as low income family. <laughs> the same fluids that make your car, yard equipment, motorcycle engines run can also create deposits that reduce their performance. Gum out multi system tune up helps re- store performance and fuel economy. Try for yourself. Buy one bottle of multi system tune up at Advanced Auto Parts. You get carbon choke cleaner free. For all the latest headlines and information, tune into Sports Center on ESPN Radio all. Throughout the day, we're 15 minutes from opening up the club around here. We got to get to how Stugatz has screwed up the entire Baldwin feud, and now we've got the face of U.S. soccer with us here. Landon Donovan is joining us on ESPN Radio, and who is the most to blame, Landon? And thank you for making time for us. Who is the most to blame for the United States not being in this tournament, so that the United States would watch this tournament? Because the United States uh, is watching the tournament, but if it, if the U.S. were in, it would be amazing watching this right now in this country. Who's most to blame for that? I agree. Um, we probably all are. I mean, obviously the coaches and players directly involved are going to take the brunt of it, but to some extent we all sort of stood by over the last decade and reveled in some sense of glory that we were having and, and didn't see the bigger issues going on in internally and in U.S. soccer. So we've all played some part in it, and it's sad because this is so much fun to watch, and I can only imagine what it would be like if you know we were waking up at 7 a.m. to watch the U.S. play. So Klinsman? Klinsman's the reason, right? Klinsman, well, Klinsman, yeah, Yeah. Klinsman's the reason. So what you're saying is that Klinsman's the reason, right? It it was all his fault. That's right. (laughs) That's what you're trying to get out of it. No, Um, no. We listen. Obviously, coaches have a huge partner, right? Between Klinsman and Bruce Arena, the two coaches who were in charge during qualifying. Um, You know, Jurgen lost the first two games in qualifying. I'm not sure in the history of. CONCACAF qualifying that if you lose your first two games, any any team has ever advanced. Um, and then Bruce Arena had a chance still to resurrect it, and he got the team back to a good place. But in the end, there was a game in Trinidad to qualify for the World Cup, and we couldn't. We lost the game. All we had to do was tie the game, and we couldn't do it. So that's uh, there's a, there's plenty of blame to go around. Can the argument still be made? Because it's one that's always being had around here, and I'm sorry, sorry for the general soccer ignorance of this question. How can soccer still be being viewed as on the rise in America when, Landon, you've been hearing it all your life? You've been hearing all your life that well, soccer's on the rise. Yeah, but it's progressive, right? It's not like, how, how could we possibly say Major League Soccer is going to be the NFL in a year or five years or ten years when the NFL's been around 50 years? Baseball's been around over 100 years. So it takes time, right? But if you look at, I mean, there are metrics, right? There are, there are data and metrics. People are paying $150 million to $200 million for an MLS franchise. Ten years ago, they were paying $5 million, right? So that piece of it is obvious, but uh, along with ratings and sponsorship revenue, et cetera, but there's just a feel around it, I'm sure. Being in Miami, you see it as much as I do here in San yep. Diego and San yep. no, California. There, there's no it's, disputing it. I've just been hearing it and seeing sure. it all my life. Like that, the thing I see what's right. happening with Zlatan and how America's embracing that in a way it never would have before. And and sure. I see the rowdiness at these soccer games where they feel like frat parties. But I've just been hearing it all my life, Landon. Well, you're probably going to hear it all your life. We all we we all are. But over the course of a generation or two. There's been massive change, and it's gonna it's gonna keep growing. And, and you know, there's a listen. I, I noticed something, and it was very subtle, and and or maybe not so subtle. When I used to go to the ESPN homepage on the internet, ESPN.com, on the top tab it would be NFL, MLB, NBA, NHL, and then it would say other, right? And now when you go to that homepage, it says NFL, MLB, NHL, soccer other 
right? And this is someone who's Canadian who's a huge hockey fan. But things are changing. Like that's a very small indication, but things are changing, and it's going to keep it's going to keep trending that way. You and Hope Solo have said, and this was confusing to me, Landon. Before you said it, I didn't know it. You. You guys are saying that this has become a rich white person sport, and I didn't think of soccer that way. I thought soccer could be played with just a, a soccer ball. I don't think of it as a rich yeah. person sport. So before you said it, it's not something I had ever contemplated. How How is it that you're arriving at that conclusion? Well, it is a sport that you just need a soccer ball to play, and that's what everyone else in the world does until they're 13, 14, and then they get picked up by a professional club's youth team. And then they start developing more professionally. In America, what's happened, unfortunately, is clubs, youth soccer clubs, have decided that this is a very good way to make a lot of money. And so they've created these clubs. They charge people three or four or five or six thousand dollars a year. And so if you're a parent and you've got two kids who love playing soccer and you want them to play club soccer, now you're paying $10,000 after taxes, it's fifteen or $17,000 you have to make just to put them in a club environment where they're getting the best coaches. So how, you know, I think of myself with a mom who made $35,000 growing up with raising three kids. We, we had 0.0 chance to be part of that system. And I only was able to because someone helped and sponsored us basically. So you can't, you can't become the best in the world if that's the way your system works. And I think we're both, along with many others, very passionate about this, and we got to find a way to make it better. Who does Landon Donovan say is the best U.S. men's soccer player of all time? Um, maybe Todd Ramos. He's it's, before everyone's time. But it's you. I think he was. It's you, Landon. It's you. It's that's you. cute. The cute, the cute humility, the fake humility. I you, appreciate you know, you, saying you it. know it's you. But Landon, you know it's you. You're just being polite there. Yeah, the most American moment ever. You had the most American moment that's, in the history of American soccer. Landon. That doesn't make you the best player ever. Well, when you have the most goals, it does. Listen, you said it, not me. Okay, but you should have said it because it's the truth. <laughs> Now that's the butter up. It. That's the butter up portion of the interview. Now we're going to hit you with what Hercules Gomez, your old teammate, <laughs> said about you, and we'll see how you react to this. And the idea that you told, well, let let Hercules describe it. I respect anybody's wish to support any national team. I am Mexican American, very proud of both my cultures. But he was paid by a bank to promote the, his biggest rival. I don't care, but he was paid. And then it wasn't that he promoted this said rival. It was that afterwards. Other national team players, ex-national team players of Mexican-American descent, Carlos Bocanegra, uh, who was a captain, by the way, he questioned Landon for doing this. And Landon literally drags him saying, you're Mexican-American, how can you forget your roots? He tried literally Uncle Tommy him. Uh, that is beyond, I can't fathom what went through his mind. He's trying to tell a Mexican-American you're not Mexican enough. That's, that's strong commentary, Landon, from, a, from an ex-teammate. It is, and in some ways he's right, uh, in some ways he's misguided. Um, it, the funny thing, first of all, about all this is all these guys I've known for a long time, they all have my number. So if they really had a problem with it, they could have just called me instead of tweeting or going on TV. So they know what they're doing, and they know that they're, they're, they're getting something out of it right. But, um, no, uh, Herc, Herc is right in that uh, I should not have gone after Carlos, and I apologized for that, and I took down the tweet I got as we sometimes get, um, emotional, and I reacted that way. I've known Carlos a long time, so it was it was interesting to me that um, he was making those comments, but I shouldn't have done that. Um, as far as getting paid by a bank, so what, what Herc and others, and this is what often happens, is you just see something and you don't really know the facts, and so you make a comment without understanding. What Herc and others don't know is that I've worked with Wells Fargo for a long time. Um, we got together, they said, we want to make another, we want to do another campaign, what can we do? And they said, what we, what we really are thinking is we want to get people excited about the World Cup, and given that this country has so many Hispanics, but also mostly Mexicans, um, how do we get people excited about Mexico? And I said, well, I grew up with Mexicans, I grew up playing me with Mexicans, I grew up in Southern California, I have many Mexican friends, and I learned how to play 
by playing with Mexicans. So I really, in a lot of ways, owe my career to Mexicans. They threw so urine. They, they threw urine on you, right? In the, the in the corner when you do corner kicks, they yeah, threw, on your bald head, they threw urine. <laughs> yes or no? Yes or no? They lots threw urine at your bald. Yes, yeah, a lot I, of a lot of people do. Lots of people a do. A lot of people do, but I expect. I, I mean, there are Americans who threw things at me when I was playing. You're, no, but urine Canadian, specifically, right? urine. The Mexicans uh, dr- drowned you in urine. Yes or no? Probably. I didn't taste it, but I'm assuming yes. Okay. When you would do the corner kicks, there's um, a little extra anyway, wet in the corner. No, that's fine. But no, the point is, is that I and I also just played and lived in Mexico for four months. I want to see. I wanted to see them succeed. I was happy for them to succeed. And by the way, I still don't understand how not having a team from this region advance into the quarterfinals of the World Cup is good for any of us. I mean, to, to root against Mexico or Panama or Costa Rica just doesn't make sense to me. We want this region to get promoted. And I think it's, you know, it's if Houston gets knocked out by Golden State, wouldn't you want the Western Conference then to win? If you're Houston or you're a Houston fan, doesn't that doesn't that make you no, feel better? But, no, 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 not at all. Okay, well that's no, the way I feel, no, and most no, of the people no, I talk to say, no, you know, I have no. people say I'm a Michigan fan, but if Ohio State no, is playing for, no, we want no, the no, only no, SEC, no, only no, the no, SEC. No, only. That, that's the way you that's the way you feel because Wells Fargo paid you to feel that way. Whoa, yeah, chill, no, corporate right. chill. Wow, he's in the corner. That's not true, Landon. We that's. No, I mean that's unfortunate, but that's you know that's the way I feel, and I and I'm not going to back down from that because I do feel that way. It was good catching up with you. Uh, let's uh, let's talk. I want to talk next week about the final. About the final prediction, real quick. Well, my predictions so far were that Germany was going to win, and then they got knocked out. That Brazil was going to win, and then they got knocked out. And then I also said last week that Croatia had no chance to win it. So I should probably stop. The, the, the Croatians are doping, right, Landon? Okay, let's get out on this note. Let's just leave. Thank you, Landon. We appreciate it. All right. Thanks, guys. This show ain't free. Time for some ads. I hope he enjoyed that. I yeah, I'm did. sure he'll be I on next week. Yeah, he'll be, yeah, he'll be do, on. Do you know when it comes to soccer, pushes a little too far. Yeah, the envelope is, is in. Walmart, Stugat, tell them about Walmart. Hey, Dan, did you hear? Amazon, raising its membership fee by 20% to $119 for free shipping. It's a big chunk of change. <laughs> Avoid the fees by heading to Walmart. They offer free two-day shipping with no membership fee. That saves you $119 to spend on anything. It's something amazing. Or Dan, $119. You know how many candy bars that is? Like 119 of them. <laughs> would you, what would you do with the extra cash? I'm thinking mounds. I'm thinking, you know, chocolate tacos. Curved television. Those look so nice in the sports bars. Yeah, Aren't chocolate okay. tacos ice cream? Yeah, but cho- chocolate's ice cream. They're also Choc- candy. They're also sandwiches. Yeah. 119 of them. Spouse feeling neglected lately? Get creative with a backyard beach vacation. Complete with beach chairs, umbrellas, and pina coladas. Or maybe it's time you take all your coworkers out to lunch on you. There's a lot you can do with 119 bucks. Thank you, Walmart. Two day, two business day shipping, minimum $35 order, restrictions apply. You can listen to the Dan Levatar Show with the Stugats, 10 to 1 Eastern on ESPN Radio. And you can watch on ESPN News. I'm a squeaky toy, and I've got one job, getting chomped on by this little ankle sniffer. So pardon me for feeling inept compared to Geico, who does so much more. Like, while I'm getting slobbered on, Geico is creating cool technology like their mobile app, which lets people pay their bills or file a claim. Plus, Geico is the fastest-growing auto insurer for the last 10 years. Is it too much for me to ask for one more feature? Fast and friendly claim service like Geico, maybe? Oh, great. I'm getting buried again. Geico. Expect great savings and a whole lot more.